Yamod Rivka Bachayim La Torah. Barku Ed Adonai Humverak. Baruch Adonai Humverak Leolam Vayed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melek Ha'alam Asher Bekarbanu Mikol Ha'amim Venetan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Bless the Lord who is to be praised Praise be the Lord who is blessed for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who did chose us from all the peoples by giving us the Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Today's reading is from Bashit, Genesis 26, 22. Vaya take Misham Vayachpor Ve'er Acheret Velo Revu Eleha Vayikra Shema Rechavot Vayamir Kieta Kirchiv Adonai Lanu Ufarinu Va Eretz And he went away from there and dug another well, and that one they didn't quarrel, so he called it Rekav, or wide spaces, and said, because now Adonai has made room for us, and we will be productive in the land. Amen. <laughs> Baruch atah Adonai, notein ha-Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who in giving us the Torah of truth has planted life everlasting in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher b'kar b'mvihim tovim V'ratzav adoreihem Hanehim arim b'emet Baruch atah Adonai Habokher b'torah Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen faithful prophets to speak words of truth. Blessed are you, O Lord, who has chosen the Torah, your servant Moshe, your people of Israel, and your prophets of truth and of righteousness. Amen. This is from Telehim, Tel or Psalms 119, verse 45. Ve'et cha lecha va rechava hi vidfiku dehya cha dara shete. And I will walk in a wide place, for I have sought your precepts. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam Asher hagilanu rakamim beyeshua Venetan lanu ketuve hashlahim Baruch atah Adonai Noten hamashiach Amen Blessed are you 
Lord our God, King of the universe, who has declared to us mercy through Yeshua and who has given us the apostolic writings. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Messiah. or Romans 5 2 and that's not all we throw our open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown the open the door to us we find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory standing tall and shouting our praise Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lanu hadavar hamet, Vachayom lan natah betocheinu, Baruch atah Adonai, No tain ketave hashlachim. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of truth and has planted everlasting in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the apostolic writings. All right, you may be seated. We moved about a year and a half ago. Our old house was behind an old Timken factory, which is a pretty big steel factory. They expanded their factory, and when they did, they ran our well dry and had to dig us a new one. They had to supply us with water drugs until the new well was complete. It made us realize just how much water we actually use. Sometimes we forget just how blessed we are to have access to clean water and just how precious it really is. Wells represent many things in the Bible. They were a place of establishment and opportunity because once a well was built, life could be sustained through it. Communities could be built up. They could support agriculture and livestock there. Wells were a place of blessing and promise. Some people, like Jacob, chose to dig a well in a place where they had an encounter with God, naming the well to honor the moment or covenant made there. God chose to encounter many people in the Bible while they were at a spring or well, like Hagar the, or the Samaritan woman that Yeshua spoke with. Yeshua gave the Samaritan woman spiritual nourishment at this well, saying in John 4.10, Everyone who drinks from this water will get thirsty again, but whoever drinks from the water that I shall give him will never be thirsty. The water that I will give him will, will become a fountain of water within him, springing up to eternal life. Women were always at the wells drawing water, just like in last week's portion, where Abraham's servant meets Rebekah. Wells are a place that held so many blessings. In our Torah portion today, the Philistines became jealous and told Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much more powerful than us. Because God had blessed Isaac abundantly, just as he had blessed his father Abraham before him, since the Philistines were so jealous of Isaac's household and their overflowing blessings, they stopped up all the wells that Abraham had dug. So Isaac departed from there and began restoring wells. Genesis 26, 19-22 says, then Isaac's servants dug a well in the valley and found a well of living water there. But the shepherds that lived there quarreled with him, saying, The water is ours. So he named the well Quarrel because they quarreled with him. Then he dug another well and quarreled over it too. So he named it Accusation because they fought over the well. It's expensive to hard to dig a well, especially in this day and age. But it was a lot harder to, to dig a well in Isaac's times. Just think how Isaac and his servants put so much time and hard work into digging those wells just to have someone else take them. To turn over the wells to the shepherds takes, says a lot about Isaac's character. If you think about it, Isaac and his family were very special. 
When you read in the Bible how generation after generation of people did what was evil in God's eyes, you see how special it was that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and his sons listened to God and were blessed because of it. Amen. They dedicated their wills to God. Almost every town or village was centered around a well, as our lives should be centered around the life-giving water of God's word. In this story, the Philistines stopped up Abraham's wells. Sadly, this is happening in our society today. The influences of the secular people, or in this case, Philistines, have greatly influenced our water supply. Not our actual one, but our spiritual one. By filling in the wells with evolutionary thoughts and sinful ideas that have greatly affected our flow of water. Proverbs 25 and 26 says, Like a muddied spring or polluted well is a righteous person who yields before the wicked. This is why we need to guard our wells so that we can protect what is most precious to us, the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. 1 Timothy 6, 20 through 21 says, Guard what has been entrusted to you, turning away from pointless chatter and the contradictions of so-called knowledge. By professing it, some have missed the mark concerning the faith. <clears throat> How do you guard your well, you ask? Well, Psalm 34, 14 through 15 says, Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking treachery. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Psalm 119, 97 through 99 says, Oh, how I love your Torah. It is my meditation all day. Your mitzvot make me, makes me wiser than all my enemies, for they are mine forever. When we guard ourselves with the word of God, we view the world around us differently. We learn to make decisions with wisdom and discernment. Don't let your well dry up and continue to fill yourself with the Holy Spirit by t spending time with God every day, reading his word and praying about everything. So ask yourselves, are you protecting your wells, or are you letting the evil things of this world in? Vizot HaTorah, Asher Samoshe, Lifne Bnei Yisrael, Alpi Adonai, Biyad Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moshe placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord and through Moshe's hand. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. <laughs> 